Amanda here from Fun Hands On Learning. And today I'd like to share with you some activities you can do for addition and subtraction. And some of these activities are kind of centered around springtime because it is April here. If you are watching this uh, video, you know, in years to come, it may not be April when you're watching it, but for right now it is April. And so we are entering our springtime of the school year. And so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna show you some springtime, but these activities could be um, used all year round. It's nothing, it's, it's not specific to springtime. It's just that I've kind of made them into springtime. So I know many of you are familiar with touch point math because I have, I've showed you it in many other videos. So what I did uh, recently is I took out our touch point math cards for April and May. So the April cards have um, eggs on them, springtime eggs for Easter, and then the uh, May cards have flowers on them for you know springtime as well. And so uh, the cards that I, we use most often are these ones. These uh, just have smiley faces, so they can be used all year round and uh, we use those many times but I also have cards that kind of coincide with every month of the school year like I have shamrocks that we used in March and I have um, I'm trying to think I have polar bears for January and winter time I had hearts for February um, you can get these cards off my website I'll leave a link below if you haven't seen them before but what we've been doing with these is just some basic addition and subtraction and you guys probably know how we use these but for those of you who don't I'm going to kind of show you here so uh, as a teacher or even if you wanted to set up if you're a classroom teacher and you wanted to set this up as a center this is a great center now um, when you set it up as a center if you're setting it up for subtraction tell the students to always put a the bigger number first so tell them to flip their cards over and pick two numbers and then whichever one's first, put it first. And then that can be a subtraction problem. If it's addition, it doesn't matter. So they just pick up, you just tell that you, you flip all the cards over. The center would be basically flip all the cards over. Okay, I'm going to mix them up. Make sure your cards are mixed up. And basically all you need for the center, you don't even need a cookie sheet. I have a cookie sheet here today because uh, I'm going to show you um, something simple you can do on a cookie sheet. But even if you don't have the cookie sheet, just um, all you need for the center are the cards and then maybe a manipulative, which I'll show you in a minute. But uh, have the cards upside down and then you tell the student, take two cards. So now if you work, let's work on addition first. So let's say they're gonna work on addition. Take two cards and flip them over. That's all they have to do. All right, we're going to add these two numbers. Now, you have hopefully before you set up the center or before you do this with a student one-on-one -on -one even, you have taught them um, touch point math. So again, touch points is where they can touch the points on the number to help them add or subtract or just to introduce them to numbers. Like if you're working with a preschool student, just to introduce them to the number two. This is the number two. This is what the number two looks like. And then we it also has a value, one, two. Um, so I have a separate video on that and I will leave a link below to my original touch point video, which I made, oh goodness, has it been two years now? It was a long time ago. Maybe it was, yeah, it was at least two years ago, I think, um, that I made that video and it's had many, many views, but I will leave a link below so you can check it out if you want more detail. But basically what we've been doing is I tell them to flip over two cards and then they have to add or subtract them. Uh, for this example, they have to add them. And the cool thing about um, teaching them touch point math is that these dots, they become so ingrained into their brain of where the dots are that even if they see numbers on a math worksheet or something that do not have their touch points, they can visualize the touch points in their head and they can add or subtract really pretty quickly. Um, so, and I love this for special needs kids. This is perfect for special needs kids and I'm gonna show you how you can make it tactile as well for special needs kids in just one second. But, um, so what they do is they flip over two cards and then they add them together. Now, um, I always tell my students to start with the bigger number and then count up. So we already know this is six, so I don't even have to count that one. So six and then you just touch seven, eight. My answer is eight. Now the reason I'm doing this on a cookie sheet is because you can use this with a dry erase marker. Cookie sheets are wonderful to use with dry erase markers because you can wipe it right off. So what you will have the children do is actually put their signs in. So I'm gonna add six plus two equals. 
Okay, I don't know is that, if that's coming through on the video, but I, I drew a plus and an equals. I'm using red, so maybe it didn't show up very good. Um, but they can write it right there on the cookie sheet, and then um, they have their signs as well. And then when they get to their answer, they can write their answer here with the dry erase marker. So I just added that six, seven, eight, and my answer is eight, and they can write it on there cookie sheet. You can also give them manipulatives to use for their answers, especially really young children. In here, I have a few different manipulatives. By manipulatives, I just mean things that they can use with their hands. And these are number manipulatives. Pour them out here. These ones come from a Melissa and Doug toy. It is a school bus and they put the pieces in the numbers in the school bus and this actually comes with the pieces plus and equal i believe it comes there's something on that one sorry my kids get into these <laughs> um yeah, you can get that off but uh they come with plus equal i think a minus is in here yes and a minus so i'm going to use these since i took it out so instead of using the dry erase which i want to erase that i'm just going to use these so this children could use these pieces and uh, like I said, it comes with, and this is the minus one. We'll put that over there for now. Uh, it comes with all of these pieces, letters or numbers zero through nine. And then it comes with the plus, minus, and equals two. And it's a little school bus that they put the numbers in. It's really kind of cute. It's all wooden pieces, which I love because they last a long time. They're nice and, you know, hard for, especially for little hands. So, all right, we have our plus and our equals. And then um, instead of, writing it with their dry erase, they would just go ahead and find the number and they would put it like that and then they could go on. So they're gonna grab two more numbers, or two more cards. And here I have nine plus one, nine plus one. We already know this is nine, so we're just gonna touch one more, makes 10, and we're gonna count on. Now for students who cannot count on, you would have them count all of the dots on the first one plus all of the dots on the second one to make their um, answers. So uh, what you teach them when you do touch point math is that you touch it twice if it has the ring around it, if it has a circle around it. So for nine, they would do like so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So nine plus one equals ten, just like that, okay? Um, now, I'm gonna show you how you can make it tactile for those students who might need, you know, a little bit more help. All right, so to make this tactile, one thing you can do is you can use Play-Doh. And I pulled out some fun um, pink Play-Doh here for springtime. And uh, what you can do is you can have them put little balls of Play-Doh on each one of the dots. Okay, so this would be for a student who is just learning how to add and they need that tactile experience with their fingers. And, um, you know, even just having the dots to touch with their finger makes it tactile, but this just goes even a step further, especially for your special needs kiddos. Um, this is a good way to go. Okay, so I'm just trying to do this real quick. All right, now. All right, so now I have them on there, and then as they count, they're going to push them down. So they're gonna go like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So four plus five equals nine. And they can put their number just like so, okay? All right, now. Another way you can do it, if you don't want to do the Play-Doh thing, I know sometimes classroom teachers don't like using the Play-Doh because it can get everywhere if you're not careful, if you got 20 kids using it. <laughs> so other things you can use besides Play-Doh, I have over here just some examples. Uh, I like to keep the lids to um, the squeezable food jars. And so those are great too. They can just place them as they count. One, two, three, four, you get the idea, and then they would place them on the five. So these are great for, a great manipulative, just for many, many things in math. 
Another one that I like to use, and I'm just going to take all of the cards out that were underneath here to show you this one. Um, so another one that I like to use, especially with a cookie sheet like this, are these. These are little pom-poms that I glued really heavy-duty magnets to. That's the stuff we got in there. Oh, thank you, Mark. Um, so... I glued heavy duty magnets to these pom poms and uh, actually did I glue them or did I buy the kind that, I think I hot glued them so that they would stay on there. But anyways, because they're magnetic, they stick to this cookie sheet. And I really like using the cookie sheets because it keeps everything kind of contained. It's got the ledge here. So for little ones, it kind of keeps everything contained. Uh, so what they would do with these then is the same thing. One, Two, and I think I show this in my other video that I did years ago. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So four plus five equals nine. Now, again, if the children are ready to move on, they can move on to just saying the first number and then counting on. So. That uh, makes it faster, and my kiddos have learned that very easily. They just say four, and then they count on. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Four plus five equals nine. So they don't even have to put these on the first number. Um, another thing that I always teach them to do with addition is, even if you get an addition problem where the smaller number is first, start with the bigger number. So what we do is... Um, if they if they were presented with this addition problem, four plus five equals, uh, they would always touch the bigger number, say it, and then count up the smaller number. So um, my son would say, if he saw this problem, he would touch five and he would say five, and then he would count six, seven, eight, nine. His answer is nine. It just makes it so much faster if you start with the bigger number. You already know you have five, and then just count up the smaller one. Uh, so for example, if you're using you know, bigger numbers, you can see how much faster that could make it. So let's say you had six plus nine. You would look at your um, problem, you would always touch the bigger one and say it, say nine, and then you're gonna count six more. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Nine and six makes 15. Okay, so um, yeah, just another strategy you can give them as they progress in their addition, in their knowledge. All right, so that is how we have been, go ahead and, <laughs> Go ahead. That is how we have been using our touch point math uh, lately. And uh, with, oh, let me just show you with subtraction. I'm gonna pull out the um, show you subtraction really quick. Uh, so these are the ones that we're currently using. The flowers are going to be for May and we're using the eggs for April. Okay, so again, they would, um, oh yeah, okay. I'm just wanna, oh, they're, some of them are not, they're not mixed up very good, so. It doesn't really matter. They would pick two. Okay, let's pick eight and three. And of course, um, for subtraction, they always have to put the bigger number first. So just remind them of that uh, when they take their two cards. All right, so they're gonna say eight and then they're gonna count back three. So they're going to go eight, seven, six, five. My answer is five, four, that one. Okay, so subtraction is just counting backwards instead of counting up. All right, so that is how we have been doing those. And um, I am going to show you now another really quick uh, addition and subtraction activity. Okay, friends, this activity comes from my springtime uh, activity centers. This is springtime addition and subtraction. I have uh, an entire bundle of... Um, language and, not language, I should say phonics and reading uh, activities as well as um, math activities for springtime. I also have them for every single season of the school year and I will leave links to all of that. You can get the, these activities um, in, you know, small bundles like just the springtime bundle or you can get the entire year and save even more if you get the entire year bundle. But, um, I'll leave links below. You don't have to go searching, okay? So if you're watching this video on YouTube, and I get questions all the time like, where can I get this activity? I always, well I try to, always remember to leave the link in the description box on 
my videos. So if you're watching it on YouTube, it's in the description box. If you're watching this on Facebook or somewhere else where someone shared the video, um, then um, hopefully I have left the link there as well, or the person did um, when they shared it. <laughs> if not, uh, you can always go to my store and you can search around. Okay, so uh, going on, this is springtime edition and subtraction. It comes with cards like this, and of course, they're just springtime pictures, and some of them are addition and some of them are subtraction. And then you have your answer cards. They're super cute, um, just flowers and frogs and umbrellas, just super cute, you know, just to make it springy. And again, you, they, so they take a card and they have to go ahead and add it up. So here I have one, two, three, four, plus two, so four, five, six, my answer is six. And they're gonna find their card and they're going to place it, so they're gonna find the number six card, they're gonna place it on here. Now, to make this a little bit more fun, you can pair this up with your manipulatives so that they have to put them next to it. So I have four, and six. So four plus six equals, wait a minute, four plus two. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not paying attention. I was looking at this. Okay, four plus two equals six. Oh goodness, that was funny. All right, so um, I, I wanted to show you guys too. If you have boys, okay, well, even girls would like this too, but I have all boys. As those of you who watch my videos know, I have seven boys. We just had, recently had our seventh baby. And so um, my house is filled with, you know, cars and all sorts of boy stuff. I don't have any dolls in my home, <laughs> which is so funny because as a girl, I grew up with so many dolls and Barbies and things. And I have none in my home, even though I've had seven children because I have seven boys. But that's how it is. Um, okay, so if you have boys or even girls who like cars and things, these cars came, are another Melissa and Doug find, and if you can't tell, I love Melissa and Doug things, and these come from a Melissa and Doug puzzle, and they all have numbers on them. Isn't that cool? Okay, so they're cars with numbers on them. You can see the little, you know, the number right there, that's four, there's 10, there's the number eight. Okay, so they have numbers on them, and then they also come with this, like, tow truck here. And it has a magnet attached to it. And what the kids do is they use this to pick up the cars, right? Isn't that cool? Well, what you could do is you can pair these up with um, activities such as this one. Even though it's not really springy, I just wanted to show you how you can pair it up with an activity. So let's say they were going to do this problem. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, I have to get the seven out. Okay. So what you would do is you'd lay out your cars, okay, and then um, they would have to find the numbers. So seven, so they're gonna use their little tow truck and they're going to pick up seven, place it on there, plus two, and this is not like to necessarily help them add, it's just to make it more fun, <laughs> equals, and then they can use the pictures to help them add it. So seven, and then they can touch eight, nine, and then they would use this to find the nine. And they would go ahead and put that there. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so you can go ahead and, uh, I'm not sponsored by Melissa and Doug or anything, but you can go ahead and buy their puzzles and use the pieces in other ways, not just in the puzzle. So uh, this is one way you could do it. And I um, have to say we've gotten a lot of use out of these pieces and all of our different puzzle pieces that we use and so just another way just another fun way especially since it has this little tow cable my boys really really enjoy using this so um and then i keep them in these bins and people ask me all the time where do i get this stuff where do i get the puzzles and things almost always amazon i just search on amazon i i look through the melissa and doug things i scroll through and then i'll come across one and i'll go oh i could use that for this or that and then i buy it so if you're looking for this puzzle i would just say type it in on amazon um you know type in melissa and doug wooden car puzzle or something like that and it should come up and then the bins i also get off of amazon they're sterilite can you see that let me see if i can see that anyways it's sterilite s-t-e-r-i-l-i-t-e -I -I -E, sterilite bins and then i just buy different sizes and then um keep all of my you know pieces in there this is 
been the best way versus keeping them in bags or things. I've found that I really like keeping them in sterilite bins, especially even our manipulatives too. So these, these lids that I've kept over the years, I like keeping them in these little sterilite bins. This is a bigger size one versus this one is kind of a, kind of a smaller one. So, all right, you guys, that is what we've been working on. And I know I haven't done very many videos. My goal is to get at least one video done a week for you guys. Um, it may not always happen because I have to tell you, now that I have um, a three-year-old, a one-year-old, and a newborn, along with my other kids who are five and seven and uh, 11 and 12, um, my older ones, it's very easy to do a video because they can um, work on other things uh, or go do something independently or go play outside or whatever. Um, but with the little ones, like all the stars have to align. The newborn and the one-year-old need to be sleeping because they will just get into everything. And then my three-year-old will also get into everything because he has special needs. And so um, he is, it, it's more like having a two-year-old than a three-year-old. He's about a year behind. And so, um, so it's kind of like I have a two-year-old, a one-year-old, and a newborn. And you just, all of you moms understand, and even teachers, if, even if you're not a mom, you understand that when you have kids that little, um, it's really hard to do anything uh, for a very long period of time without being either interrupted um, or something goes crazy. So now that I have the newborn, it, it, it's an adjustment right now, just trying to find the time to do my videos, along with the time to create my resources and because uh, I, I have to spend time on the computer, which usually I am working on creating resources at night when the kiddos are asleep because they need me. Obviously during the day, I wanna give my kids as much of my time as possible. And so um, you can imagine how it is. But my goal is to get one video to you guys a week. And, um, and by the way, if you see like, my nails are never manicured and I always have like marks on my hands and things when I do these videos, but that is just mom life and that's the way it is for me right now. So um, one of these days I'll, I'll be able to, you know, find the time to, to paint my nails and things. But um, all right, that's the end of my, my little rant here, but I just wanted to kind of keep you updated on why you're not seeing so many videos. And it's just because this is, um, you know, the, the videos are fun and I love to do them and I'm going to continue to do them, but it's just going to be on a, probably a, um, take me a little bit longer to get my videos out to you guys. Again, my goal is at least one, one a week. I used to have a goal of two to three a week, which I was trying to do for a while there. Um, and then, um, my goal kind of went to one a week. And so that's where I'm at is one a week. It may be one every two weeks. I don't know, but, um, you guys get the picture and you guys understand. And so, uh, yeah, but yeah, I love doing them. So I'm not going to stop doing my videos. I'm just going to have to do them when the time is right and when I have the time for it. And that's totally fine, I think. And hopefully you guys will stick with me for it. Okay. Um, I really appreciate you guys watching this. There we go. I don't know why. Oh, I hope that wasn't, uh, unclear for you guys for a long time. Okay. I will talk to you guys soon and we'll see you next time. Bye.